somehow. You know, the person who crafted it, and then the person who sewed it and wore it, the story of these people. Uh, I think it's in there, so when you place it, you have this whole background, the history of the uh, the area it's from, or the house, the home it's from. Even Welcome to Seek Sustainable Japan on Location. In this episode, I'm talking with artist and architect Barbara Kuhn, who is originally from Hanover, Germany and based in Tokyo. Her brand is Tokyo Threads. I had a chance to catch up with Barbara and learn about her love of cycling and her love of architecture and old Japanese buildings, as well as her ideas for how to reuse beautiful vintage fabrics and textiles into new products and artwork that she has been creating over the last two years. We had the chance to talk at Barbara's pop-up event at a beautifully renovated 100-year-old machiya in Tadanomi, Takehara, Hiroshima. I'm Barbara and I work with the uh, material vintage uh, fabric of uh, kimono, Japanese kimono, obi, haori. Uh, mostly take them apart and uh, reuse uh, the fabric to make uh, table decorations, uh, lunch mat sets, uh, coasters, uh, these kind of things, uh, uh, table runners. And uh, lately I got uh, uh, drawn into uh, sewing uh, bags uh, because no one wants to use plastic or anything anymore so everyone is looking for uh, reusable items. I live in Tokyo, I'm from Germany but I live in Tokyo and uh, I work with uh, this uh, material, I called it Tokyo Threads. Nice. Where in Germany are you from? From the north, from the north, uh, town is called Hanover. And, uh, but I've been here in Japan for a long time, so I, you kind of somehow lose the connections and take your roots here when you yeah. live for, at the place for a long time. Have yes, I came to Japan more or less right after graduating uh, from uh, architecture school in Germany. And uh, till then I had worked in uh, Italy and in Switzerland uh, in my field and came to work here actually also as an architect and did that for uh, about 15, 20 years. Uh, mostly in social housing. Uh, one of my first projects was a big social housing project down in Shimonoseki for a competition which uh, we at the office won and then it was later uh, built. And then I visited it a few years ago, so it's uh, almost 30 years old now. And uh, it's still in use. It's uh, it's nice to see that um, these things last, and people actually use it. And everything is with sliding doors and windows, so uh, it opens up. Uh, you're right. If, if it's on the first floor, you're right on the level of the street, even or your garden, whatever you have, and. Uh, Different from uh, Western rooms, uh, the, the uh, Japan tatami rooms, they don't have just one function. You know, during the day you live, you use it as a living room or you have guests sitting around the table, but in the evening put that to the side and uh, pull out the, uh, the uh, futons, the mats to sleep on. And uh, it's actually nice when you have guests you don't need to count your beds, how many people can you actually uh, have in your home. You just sleep a little bit like uh, as uh, when you were in school and went on a school trip and slept in the, uh, I don't know, the gymnasium or something like that. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of a multifunctional house. And for sure nowadays, uh, uh, Apartments, houses are not always built from wood, but they mostly still have one room in Tatami. Switched uh, my jobs uh, later on while in Japan, but then um, I got introduced here to Yuka san, who owns this guest house. And uh, when she was still uh, remodeling it, so uh, I came down and uh, 
um, the workers were here and they uh, it was still in the process of deciding what to do how and do we need lights and what kind and how should it work so it, it's nice now to come back two years later and see it all done and uh, now she's opening this pop-up kitchen uh, which people can rent for an event even private uh, birthday party but also like a barista if someone wanted to just uh, market their own brand they can uh, have that place everyone has an image about home because everyone lives in a house in their home they know what they like they've seen places they don't like but uh, if you you walk into an unused house it's sometimes difficult to imagine or have an idea of, uh, with little changes how can you uh, make it for your own use or in this case as a guest house so uh, this was originally a, a shop a sweet shop so it has an area for, for customers where they come and came and buy and then the owners lived here and upstairs and they have this little courtyard in the back um, and so what to do with all the corridors do you want to leave it like a bed? Can you end it to a room? You know, so I was more involved in the conceptual things like why don't you take the old uh, window doors out but use them to the side, then you make the room bigger and uh, uh, the tonsils from there you can actually put there and uh, have your guests in that uh, guest house later use it uh, for their. Stuff. So more in that sense, conceptual, right? Like, uh, but here you, it's open, but you definitely need, need the glass wall. I, I came to help, but uh, you as the owner, you have to choose. So you can give ideas. So if you leave all this like in the beige as it is, it's, um, you will have that this kind of warm feeling. But just for a second, imagine. You color this whole wall in uh, light blue with orange dots, right? Then, if you say something like that, people have an image in it and they have an idea. But maybe themselves, walking through, they would never come up, oh, I could actually change it and make it uh, uh, even a tapestry, yeah. that, right? So it's, uh, and then people uh, start to invent themselves or have ideas and, uh, and that's a way to help them find or come to their decision. Right. Because sometimes you walk into a remodeled or even a new play house or home and you, you know what you like and don't like right away. That's just even just a feeling. But when you stand, uh, even if you build new, to imagine from the plans how it will be, it's sometimes difficult, right, if you do it for the first time. Yeah. So the, I think that's often where the architect comes in and suggests ideas and then you can choose from. Yeah. You can, and you see that nowadays, these old Akia that are changed, they keep the old heart of it, but it's used in, uh, for the new use. You need that also, like a guest house like that. Especially like these old things, when they were um, made, the people uh, had the time or yeah, it just worked with their skills. The craft, it's a craftsmanship, right? So uh, uh, these things last forever. So uh, instead of pulling it out and just putting a cheap panel in, you can uh, maybe exchange a broken yeah. glass. I love cycling. Uh, I love the outdoors actually. So, and, but lately, over the past 10 years, I'm into cycling. And I, uh, I cycled, except one prefecture, I've cycled all over Japan already. And uh, sometimes, because uh, I live in Tokyo, big city, just uh, day trips. And uh, sometimes I go on a trip for two, three, four weeks uh, with my travel bike. And this is also how I came to this place two years ago. There's a famous shrine, don't ask me what it's called, right at the, uh, uh, the ocean, uh, where the... Uh, where the gate actually faces the ocean, right? Normally, uh, so actually the 
it would be you come in from this side with a boat to come up and the shrine stands then here but I just like this. This is how I came and uh, so while I uh, travel around and it's uh, if you go by car it's so much faster right you pass by you know, the landscape passes by the window but when you um, cycle it's a slow travel you stop to take pictures or have a drink or buy something to eat and uh, the movement is so repetitive so just pedal along and your mind starts spinning or you think about uh, something you saw in the other village over but it takes you half an hour and then it comes into your mind back just being outside seeing the landscape pass by uh, you meet people people just approach you sometimes and chat to you you listen to stories and that's how i remembered i have all these um, boxes at home with my fabric i've always uh, collected fabric and uh, when I was young sewing my own uh, clothes and uh, I didn't I think for the children many years back I did my last projects and I thought like what a shame to have it all there so and then I started to find a little shop and they uh, have some old uh, kimono and I started <laughs> getting more th uh, when originally I thought I'll work on it and get rid of my pieces <laughs> but now after two three years actually I have more boxes than before but um, it's so lovely to buy the touch uh, the colors uh, and you can see the, uh, the, the, the work the, uh, the skills that go into you know it's not just like machine all the kimonos are hand sewn so uh, and uh, the the color uh, over years you can see the use and the material you can change it over and uh, use the, the back part and have this and uh, have it new it's like the tatami the old tatamis had uh, the, 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 the grassy part on both sides so when it got old really old to not be used anymore you could just switch it over and uh, continue using it before one day for sure you have to have it made new so that's how it started and um, I uh, did show you and I was invited for an ex exhibition or take part with uh, I am um, you know with uh, the pandemic we had so many uh, new online chances, workshops you could take, uh, lectures to listen, and I joined um, a drawing class, a monthly drawing class with friends. And uh, then our organizer teacher said, why don't you present? And then I thought, what will I do there? And I didn't want to show my drawings, it's just sketching in the evening together. And that's when I made a series of um, this uh, kind of landscape. Uh, and I thought, what, uh, what would I draw from? And I thought about my trips, you know, passing by the forests, you see, you see uh, hills and uh, sometimes it rains. You can see it. This is uh, material and like the, the, the white part is actually what is the inner fabric in the obi uh, to make it a bit stronger. Uh, to make it the ribbon stand and and the others is uh, is OB material the outer part and uh, you can see I I made I have some with snow or rain over it I stitched over this and this thread also is the thread uh, you use to make a kimono so uh, I didn't just want to make a picture I wanted uh, the connection that the thread is what is uh, traditionally used and uh, with the old material but make something uh, new so i had a series it's called uh, waldesgang because i'm german i uh, called it uh, um, which is like a stroll through the forest and i had this white one is the last one left i had um, a night one and uh, uh, this is just a copy, so it doesn't come out. So this, uh, the gold popped out of the darker background. And what was that one called? 
it's all because it's this is Valdis Gang uh, noon. This was night, and this was uh, the uh, evening. Nice. But this, I was lucky. Someone liked it. Some of the visiting uh, bought it. It's nice you have like a, a yeah, pictures. First, first time I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I. I uh, yeah, it's like it's a piece of you, right? And then, yeah. I just placed it so you can yeah. see what you actually can do with it. Have your little dishes on top. Uh, if you uh, think about it, you can go the other. Anything I create is reversible, so you can place it differently according to your occasion. I'll put something out like that. And. Uh, uh, I don't hand stitch actually, I uh, do everything with a machine, but that's kind of my tool to create uh, these new pieces. And uh, Japan homes are uh, often smaller, so um, I have uh, smaller pieces because plates, cups, everything is a bit smaller in Japan. But uh, for most of my customers, actually, foreigners, so usually I. Uh, so these bigger pieces. And lately, lately I got into these bags. Uh, you can see some there. And um, as I said, so uh, I thought about the eco bag. Was something easy, not too heavy. You can just grab, put in your bag, and pull it out when you getting off the station. No, I need to go grocery shopping and go like that and have it over. And, or you go to the beach with your kids, just pull all the uh, towels in there. Uh, it's, it's big enough. But uh, you can also use the other side. Maybe you go out for a different event. And uh, so uh, I try to uh, match or think uh, what matches each uh, fabric <laughs> celebration <laughs> color, the yellow with the red. So and beautiful. And uh, when I found this, because nowadays the uh, if you have an obi uh, and the design on it is on one side, so it shows here. And the other side is often of a more simpler material nowadays. But this is from a time when both sides. Both sides uh, were of that uh, design and material, so they didn't need to probably cut costs or, and also for a special event. These lovely stripes. Oh, yeah. But uh, so actually, because this is a bit shiny with the gold in there, the gold screen. Use it uh, as a simple red bag, depending what you wear that bag. It's a bit more sturdy because of the material. The uh, obese are often uh, woven with a heavier thread. Uh, I started making bags, thinking um, everyone, uh, no one wants to use plastic material and produce more garbage. And, uh, so uh, I want you to make a simple bag. You can just grab, put it in, in your car or on your bicycle in the basket. And then on the way home, you realize you have to go shopping. So I made it quite uh, a bigger size. Uh, so you can even just throw the veg vegetables in or um, um, go to the beach with your kids, have the toys or, or, or to the playground and um, carry it light. So there is uh, uh, no zipper, no nothing, because uh, uh, like that, it's just easy to use. Shuffle everything in, get it out. And as same as the lunch mats, I make everything reversible, so. Uh, Before you reverse it, tell us about the material. Oh, yes, yes. So this outside is originally, uh, uh, was an obi. And uh, this was a wedding obi. The yellow uh, with this uh, uh, crimson red is uh, for celebration. And um, this, the lady I bought it from in the shop, she told me it's really old because the new uh, obis often nowadays um, 
they have the design of the flower or uh, autumn leaves, which shows in the back on the obi when you close the ribbon. Uh, but on the back side, that doesn't show when you uh, bind it. It has often of a simpler material because it doesn't show. But in the old times, when they made obis, they had the same material on both sides and, and the same design of stitch. So uh, uh, this is uh, actually a lovely material that has lasted. So it must be at least 30, 40 years old. You, but the story of it is in there somehow. You know, the person who crafted it and then the person who sewed it and wore it, the story of these people. Uh, I think it's in there, so when you place it, you have this whole background, the history of the, uh, the area it's from, or the house, the home it's from, even though you don't know the actual person. Um, you know, when you cycle, it's kind of a slow uh, uh, traveling uh, lifestyle, uh, so you have lots of time to think and watch your surrounding, the landscape, and often people stop and talk to you, and then you hear, oh, let's go there, that's a nice restaurant, have a lunch, sit down. So I listened to all these stories, and that reminded me of uh, my boxes <laughs> with all these old uh, material in it. And uh, that's how I started uh, two years ago. This one there. Pandemic. Thanks for joining Seek Sustainable Japan today. What did you think of Barbara's insights about architecture and design in Japan, as well as her beautiful textiles? Please write them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and like and share with a friend. Search Tokyo.threads on Etsy or Instagram to buy some of Barbara's beautiful artwork and upcycled kimono and obi textiles. Thanks again for joining. Please take care of yourself. Have a wonderful winter holiday and see you next time on Seek Sustainable Japan.